Hello then, welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. And we are a day out from Rasi Erasmus releasing his team to face the All Blacks in the second test. Have been down in Cape Town and the Springboks were training in uh, uh, at the DHL Stadium earlier today, which gives a bit of an indication of some of the players who were and weren't part of the sessions and could be in line for selection. The big news is that Springbok captain Sia Khaleesi did train and uh, is therefore in line, in theory, you think, uh, to play this weekend. Uh, potentially one of the reasons they might have delayed the team selection, for example, um, although generally they've got a rule that if you don't train on Monday, you don't play. Uh, but maybe it's about you know training on Monday and then seeing how you get through that session, for example, and how you recover, and are you good on Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Thursday is the day off. So they really would have had their final training session, um, the major training session of the week before the captain's run, which is just a short hour session, on Friday, um, we're going to have a little bit of, uh, of, uh, of fun with this with this team selection. I don't think it's going to be what we're going to see uh, necessarily, but um, I thought we'd look at a potential 7-1 split and how it might look. And I don't think we're going to see it because I think the 7-1 split and the value in the 7-1 split comes in, you know, two uh, locks potentially and uh, and then two, two flanks. And I think what was really good about the 7-1 split, especially in the World Cup final, for example, is Dion Free was covering at hooker. Um, where he traditionally probably would have come on actually at um, on the flank, um, and which is where he did a lot during the the the, the, the World Cup. Um, and Mongi Manami, for example, in 18 minutes. Um, so we don't quite have that kind of player. Um, it would be interesting to see, for example, um, if Jan Hendry Vessels, you know, really sort of starts to change this kind of concept with the fact that he is somebody you can cover hook, hooker and, uh, and and prop, for example, something, something we haven't really seen. Uh, and you could almost then, for example, have an extra... Um, sort of a, a loose fall in the bench, for example, and have, you know, the energy best as somebody who can cover different positions. So let's have a look at exactly what I've got and how this loose this six, seven one split potentially could look. Now, obviously, the big thing with the seven one split is you need utility players um, across the board. And um, you need players who can, who can sort of play in different positions. So, for example, Damien Willemse is was so important to that seven one split and during the World Cup because he can play at um, you know 10, 12, 15, uh, if you needed to. And and I've, and, and I've sort of taken that to the Sash Palmer Gomes is basically going to fill in that role. Now, if we think back to that sort of 7-1 split back in the World Cup final, it was um, Vili Leroux that was on the bench there. And we didn't have a scrum off. And uh, therefore, Corpus Run, I'm sorry, um, have to click out to go the full sort of 80. And if you were to be injured, then you'd look at a, a Chisholm Colby, for example. So I've gone with a similar concept. So let's go through it, shall we? First of all, I do think Stephen Kitsop is going to be involved this weekend. Playing in, 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 in Cape Town, for example, there were suggestions that there might be a change. Um, and I think that we might see him coming back in. And I also think you're looking for a really big impact off the bench. Oxen chair is your man. Uh, Bongi Manami, France, but I think that's pretty straightforward. Um, I've then gone with Ibn Etzebe starting. I mean, he came through last weekend, and I don't see why he wouldn't start, uh, for example. And um, I've got him next to Ruan Lokir, who I think was really impressive last weekend. Uh, the lines were operating really well, and I think he's yet going to get another opportunity. Uh, you could go Pierre Step the toy, for example, um, and then you know have somebody else at seven, like a Ben Jason Dixon. I've not gone that, that route. Uh, but let's wait and see what we will see. Uh, so in terms of the background, I've got my Sia Khaleesi, Pierre Step, Toy, Jasper Visa, our best loose trio. Um, I don't think there's any sort of argument really about that. Um, I've brought in Jane Hendricks. Uh, we might see a close runner. I probably will, but um, I'm a big fan. A lot of people are disagreeing with me on that uh, on that uh, selection, but I just think he's such a good all-round player. He's somebody who's absolutely made um, for international rugby in particular. The way he manages the game, very intelligent player, very good box kicker, for example. Um, and I think that's going to be an important part of this weekend. I backed Asher at 10, no reason to drop him, for example. I brought him up as one of my pimpy for Kurt Lawrence, who did not train today. Um, you know, was a concussion, um, so we expect to see him on a stand-up period of about 12 days. And uh, so we probably won't see him... Um, this weekend, but also we might see someone run, for example. Um, so... It's an interesting one. I've gone with, with, with three loose forwards on the bench. You could very easily go with two locks, two loose forwards. We'll get to the bench in a bit. Um, just mentioning something about because of the, the the concussion, which you know in theory brings him back into it, uh, this weekend, assuming that he is all, all good everywhere else. Um, in terms of... Um, this is the back line. Damon Dennendi, Jason Creel. We might see Lacan Young, for example. I wouldn't be opposed to it, but I don't see why you drop Jason Creel. Jason Colby in the 14. Fussy as well. I think was so good last weekend. Why change it? So then it comes to my 7-1 split. And uh, look at these players for impact. Malcolm Marks, Auction Chair, Vincent Koch. They have done it before many, many a time. 
in terms of uh, that scrum battle, for example, that really brings in. Now, I've gone with Nicky Janssen van Furen, who is an absolute unit of a man, and uh, I think could be bringing in, um, you know, the, the, the type of impact uh, that we would like. You know, he, he stands at, um, at well over two meters. He's about 150, 120 kgs. He is a large man. And uh, I think you bring a big impact on it in the second half, probably more than, you know, somebody like bringing a Nokia off the bench. Um, so I've gone with him, and then I've gone with a, a, a brand new loose trio, Mark Mastard, Albert Lowe, Quaker Smith. Probably would make more sense in many ways to kind of go with a Ben Jason Dixon. Um, you know, in that, if you're going to have a 7-1 split, you kind of go Nick Jans from Fury and Ben Jason Dixon. And there too, uh, Ben Jason Dixon is a lock option. And then you kind of go an Albert Lowe, Quaker Smith. But, um, you know... I've gone with basically a breakdown menace, you know, Malcolm Marks breakdown threat, Malcolm Mastard breakdown threat, Quacker Smith breakdown threat, threat, Albert Lowe is not a bad breakdown threat either. And then in the starting line, we've got Stephen Kitsoff, who's a reasonably good breakdown threat as well. And then I've gone with a, um, a, a Hodge Apollo on, on, on the bench as a fly half option. Um, you know, you could start with Hodge Apollo and you have Satch on the bench. Um, but the nice thing is, for example, there are players who cover the different places. So, for example, the way I'm seeing the 7-1 split is the entire bench, get, I mean, the entire starting pack gets to a place, save um, probably Peter Steph Toy, can move back into lock, can move to number four position, and Nicky Jans van Furen goes into the number five. Um, or I'll seek, for example, you could have a Shalom Murat on the bench if he's fit and he comes on and, and replaces Evan Etze at four. Peter Steph Toy shifts to five, and you've got a brand new loose chair of Mark of a and Albert Lowe, Quaker Smith. You can have Mark of a and Quaker Smith, Ben Jason Dixon, for example. You can kind of play with it. So I kind of just talked about because we saw some people talking about a 7 1 split. Um, I think we are going to see changes tomorrow, and uh, we're going to see what those final changes are. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Smash the like on the video, subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.